It's hoop season, so our football coaches' shows have moved over to our basketball coaches' shows. We're in the same spot as always, and we slice it up for you, as always. Hi, everybody. I'm Russ Eisenstein, the voice of the Ohio Bobcats. The Jim Christian Collin Show started year two this past Monday night in Athens. We were on the Ohio IMG Sports Network from 7 until 8 o'clock. The Bobcats are 6-2 and two on the year and welcome in Alabama A&M to the Convocation Center on Saturday at 2. But before that, we sliced up the Christian Show for you. Here's the first edition of the Christian Show Slice. Nine games in the books after business on Saturday. Six wins. What do you like? What don't you like about your ball club right now? Well, a lot of things. I think, you know, if you look at... Um uh, the start some guys had. I was looking yesterday at the minutes. Uh, you know, a guy like Ricardo Johnson's played over 200 more minutes already than he did after eight games last year. T.J. Hall, a lot more minutes. Uh, great development from John Smith. And, and I, I think the, the best part about our team is I think we're not even close to scratching the surface. We still have a lot of guys who, you know, who haven't really played the way we're, we know they're capable of playing at this point. Um, you know, I think we obviously rebound the ball better. That's what our numbers are way up from where they were last year little disappointed in how we're shooting the ball, and that's going to get better. I think we have, um, you know, we have, we, have, we have very capable shooters. We just haven't shot the ball very well early and off. But, you know, overall, our defense, we've played now eight games, and only one team shot over 40% in the game, and that was 40.1. So I think overall there's a lot of things to be that we can build on. Why have you guys been so good on the defensive end? You know, we have a lot of length, I think, and that helps. You know, the area for us that, that uh, we've improved on is, is without question our defensive rebounding and our ball containment. In the last few games, we've gotten much better in those areas. The area that obviously we have to improve on is we're still committing 23 fouls a game. Yeah. So, and a lot of them, you know, as we talked about again today, those are plays where it's not adjusting. They're plays that we're making a lot of similar type fouls in open floor situations where we don't need to be fouling. So some of them you get put in bad situations and you're gonna foul, although the numbers are down in terms of free throws we're giving up. Um, those are alarming because we're putting them at the bonus too quickly, and it takes away from, from some of our efforts. But overall, our defense, I think, has been, you know, kids are playing unbelievably hard. We rotate very, very well. Um, you know, we've adjusted defense. We've probably played more zone this year than I've ever played um, because of our length and our speed. So I think that's helped a little bit in times, but we just have to maintain that. That's a number that, you know, we can control that with our effort and our, our ability to follow game plans. The other area I think we've done a great job of that we were poor in last year is if you looked at the, what the – the leading scorer of the other team is averaging coming into our game and what he gets in our game from 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 Tettle from Northern Iowa all the way down I think they're almost at half of what they've been averaging yeah and you know like I said in the game we played at Oakland if you'd have told me we would have held Travis Bader to one point and a half of basketball I'd tell you we were yeah. up 20 you know because he's that good of a player and and uh, but we just didn't you know we didn't produce on the other end but that's something that we we've, we've emphasized a great deal and have to continue to do talk about what you've seen not only from the rockets but but your thoughts through non-conference play and what you're seeing from the rest of your mac brethren well uh, obviously the league's off to a great start i think that uh, i was they played unbelievably well um highlighted by a win at boston college not an easy place to win against an acc team um one at robert morris on saturday nice win um, the things that stand out, the offensively, their numbers are staggering. They're averaging 92 points a game. Uh, they shoot 42% as a team from three. And you have to think about that for a second. 42% is ridiculous after, after uh, eight or nine games. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're a very well-rounded good team, but everybody else has looked good too. I think Akron's come back to play well. They won at Cleveland State. Kent's off to an 8-2 start. Eastern Michigan has played people very, very well, and there'll be a lot to handle. Western Michigan has some good wins. So it's a... You know, overall, I think it's going to be a really good year in the MAC. And I just watched yesterday because they replayed it, uh, the Bowling Green at Xavier game, and, that, and they should have beat Xavier at Xavier. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, the MAC is always what it is. There's always good teams. It's always tough to win, home and away, every single night because of the balance and, and how well teams know each other. Alabama A&M's out of the swag, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. They are picked to win their league. You've seen them on tape. They're uh, athletic. Uh, they can score. Your thoughts on what you've seen from them? Yeah, real impressed with how they shoot the basketball and, and uh, get up after you a little bit defensively, more aggressive than, than most of the teams that we've played. So that'll be a good test as well. But, you know, they've played a lot of teams tough on the road. I mean, um, some really good environments, played people well, played Western Michigan in our league to a two-point game, had the lead late. Um, so I think they're a really good basketball team. And, again, you know, the whole part of the non-conference schedule for us was we tried to play as many teams as we could who were going to win their league teams who were going to do you know, who you know would be in the top of their league so northern iowa historically in the top of the league valpo historically in the top of their league 
Um, Oakland, I think, is going to be a team to contend with in, in the horizon because of, because of how well they play. So I, I think and, and Alabama A&M is no different. So we wanted to play teams like that. So it'll be another test, especially with another week layoff, which, which has not been good for us. And again, uh, you uh, mentioned in the previous segment that if uh, players are looking ahead to UMass, they're, they're obviously reined in by, by what happened against Oakland. Um, and we talked about it in the post game. There, there were a lot of things to correct from that one ball game to get back to doing what you'd done in the previous seven games. It's not like the world's coming to an end here. This is a team that has shown a lot of power on the both offensive and defensive ends. Just things need to be cleaned up from that Oakland game moving forward. Yeah. Oh, no question. More individually, you know, a lot of things collectively, but really individually, some guys have to start getting and feeling good about their games again. And, and I think that's what happens. You know, that's the test of the season is the hardest thing to be as an individual player is consistent. Do what you do well consistently over the course of 31 nights it's pretty hard to do so eight of them are in the books some guys haven't hit their stride yet and we got to get those guys going and and then collectively we have to continue to embrace our identity which i don't think we've done a great we did uh, but we came away from our own identity in that game and we've got to get back to being who we are ohio is five and zero at home this season they try to go to six and zero on the home ohio is five and zero. Ohio is 5-0 at home this season. They try to go 6-0 against Alabama A&M on Saturday. Our radio network coverage starts at 1.30 with the tip at 2. That's the Christian Show Slice from Donato's in Athens. For Tony Romain and Tanner Smith, I'm Russ Eisenstein, and this is Bobcat TV.